Hello, here we are in part two. I'll just give you a little overview about some things inside After Effects to uh, get used to the workflow and the interface. One of the first things you can see obviously right here is this is really ugly. And a couple things are going on here. First of all, there's this right here. This is the resolution display of your comp window. Right now it's at the quarter resolution. If I did full, that allows you to see the full resolution of the image in the composition. Now that's good and bad. It's okay right now because nothing's really happening. But when you have full resolution things going on with a lot of video layers, a lot of special effects going on, it ends up really slowing down your computer. So this is one of those ways that you can optimize playback by just choosing a different level of resolution in your display. One more thing that happens, I'm just going to solo this right here. This is a vector file, which is great, but unless After Effects knows that, it'll still treat it as a bitmap file. Now if I go into Transform and Scale, and I scale this up to be really humongous, you can see right here that these edges are really bad, they're pixelated. It's because it's, After Effects thinks this is still a bitmap image. And so in here, inside this timeline, are a lot of options for columns of displaying things that you can show about the layer. These are what you want to look at. And there's this one right here, it's called continuously rasterize for a vector layer. Now when I turn this on, right here, boom, it's sharp. It's now recognized as a vector layer inside After Effects. So I can make this as big as, as I want. 3000% scale. If I go back to 100. So anyway, that's one thing important to know about After Effects and what's great about integrating Illustrator into After Effects is the ability to keep your vector layers as vectors for animation. So I'm going to go ahead and select that for all of them so that they're all sharp. And the second thing I wanted to show is the composition settings up here. If you go in here, the drop down, composition settings, now in here, this is where you're able to set your frame size, your frame rate, and your duration, along with some other things. But what you want to focus on right now are your frame size and your duration. Frame rate, frame rate's not that big of a deal right now because in animation, you know, it really kind of comes down to how many frames you want to mess with for your animation. This is really important when you're doing video things, which we're not doing right now. So I'm gonna uncheck this lock aspect ratio right now, and I'm gonna go in here in the width and type in 500 and 500. As you can see, it live updates in the composition. I'm going to resize and rearrange it in the next tutorial as we start animating. This is important. I think this is as big as it needs to be for an animated GIF. And it's probably going to end up being smaller when we get done. But 500 by 500 is a good basic standard square format for this type of animation. And then down here, the duration, you know, I think three to five seconds is going to be the max. For this, I'm going to go to 5 right now and type it in. As I hit OK, you can see down here, it didn't really change yet, but what did change is this scroll bar as it goes from 3 seconds to 5 seconds. And what happened here, because I extended the composition, these layers that I brought in stopped at 3 seconds. So now there's nothing going on past three seconds. If I go to the playhead and hit play, it all disappears because these layers end. So one thing to, one way to do that 
One way to extend these layers is to shift select and you can just go right to the end right here and extend them to the end of the composition. There's a shortcut here that's nice. It is Alt right bracket. That's for the that's for that's to move the end of the layer to the playhead. If you go here and do Alt left bracket, that moves the beginning of the layer to the playhead. Those are really nice organizational shortcuts so you don't have a lot of random durations of layers that end up becoming a total mess. So say I did that, say I had this kind of going on in my timeline and I wanted to make it all the same. I can just shift select, alt, right bracket. That's awesome. And, then, and additionally, I could do shift select and just left bracket without the alt and that moves layers to the playhead. Left bracket moves the beginning of the layer to the playhead. Right bracket moves the end of the layer to the playhead. Those are really nice things to, to know just to kind of make your workflow faster. So I'm going to go and do alt left bracket right now and go to the end and do alt right bracket and make everything the duration of the composition. Now there's this down here you can zoom in to your comp and right now since it's only five seconds long there isn't a lot to zoom in on when I go all the way to the end this this kind of interlacing stripe pattern is showing you individual frame durations at this zoom level so that's as far as you can go in animation so as I zoom out I can get this five second duration it's a good standard animation. I want to show you this too. This is your, you know, just canvas view size. There's a nice one that you can do where it'll fit it up to 200% as opposed to just fitting it. So we can make the screen size. You can get the most real estate for your screen size by doing that. And it also will extend, it'll scale as you move that window, but only up to 200%. Additionally, there's a nice shortcut. If you do tilde, that makes whatever window that your cursor is over full screen. Tilde is really nice to have. You want to get deep into, you know, say you have every, say you have all of these open, you know, and you end up getting a full screen of parameters and values and keyframes, and you don't want to deal with it in this little window right here if you only have one monitor. Tilt is really nice to pop into full screen, do a couple things, pop back out, pop into here, and it's really fast. It's a really useful way to, to get the most out of a single monitor, especially a laptop monitor. And the next one we're going to talk about basic animation, what all these parameters mean and how to animate them, and go a little bit into the graph editor.